name is Uri and I was born in the Galilee. Uh, sometimes I say Galilee, <laughs> but uh, Israel, Israel, Palestine. And I think my life path, um, you know, went through different um, moments of brokenness and cracks that definitely one of the most important ones was um, after following my army service in the Israeli army and um, yeah, kind of the images and the stories and the experiences that I've seen and trying to make sense of what brought me to there and what what's my purpose and a lot of things. And um, yeah, this, this brought me actually first to theater and then theater of the oppressed. And then eventually it also got me to uh, Dragon Dreaming, Permaculture, Theory U, and then Social Presence in Theater, that I'm uh, currently a, a practitioner, a researcher of. Um, I collaborate with, um, yeah, uh, like locally, now I live in Italy. Uh, locally, I collaborate with the um, uh, Italian Association of Town, uh, and we're working in connection with the immigration system about social inclusion and using like a mixed bag of tools but definitely there is a lot of reference to theory you in our work as well um, and I bring when I can the embodied work which I do for myself and I believe very much is a necessary part of uh, any transformative learning experience um, I'm also collaborating and associating, coordinating work with Imagine Action, which is a US-based nonprofit, but actually a network of social artists and facilitators and different parts of the world, started by um, a mentor of mine, Hector Aristizabal. He's Colombian. And um, yeah, he, his work was very influential on me and, and many other people and the way that he, And, and still being a very close connection. Um, yeah, and, and, and more things. I'm very excited to have this talk about reimagining education. Um, this is something that came up also with the collaboration with Arawana Ayashi and Presencing Institute. And this year also with another uh, friend and colleague and teacher of social presencing theater, Heather Huggins, which have done incredible And um, we, we started this hub, actually, of transforming higher education. So I, when it came up, I said, oh, that's, that's, that's very cool. Um, yeah, so I, I've been, you know, I left ed higher education 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, but I'm now coming back in the pandemic. I started teaching newspaper theater on a, in a university class. Although I never visited physically the university yet. <laughs> I've, I'm already starting my fourth group of students um, and I yeah and I I'm, you know I'm, I am getting a lot of input and insights and interested to hear more of people and, and see the possibility of what does it mean and what what does it um, can add if we bring this embodied arts creative into the classroom you know and it could be university it could also be schools um, so yeah, also with that, I have some experiences, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear and, um, and be in conversation. Yeah. You might have answered a lot of, uh, most of the questions, but let's go a more structured maybe. <laughs> what possible stuck situation brought you to the journey of reimagining education and prototyping? If you can think of a moment that might come now. And when I think about my journey with education, it has, uh, you know, so I was, I was, a, a, you know, a very shy and, but I think, you know, quite smart student. Uh, I, I always got quite good grades, although I have never, almost never done my homework, but I was listening. I was basically listening. I, I only knew later that I needed glasses. I didn't know I was in the back of the class. 
and I wasn't seeing what the teacher was writing. <laughs> and I, I think it, I, only at 16, I, I got, I knew that I need glasses. Um, but I just thought that that's how it is. So I was listening, you know, so I was listening and uh, remembering. So I had this, I still have this memory for things. Um, so that was very helpful. Uh, socially, I wasn't, you know, again, I was very shy. I had this group of people. And I think, you know, uh, we're, we're, but we're really the break in my education. Again, I mentioned the army and, you know, I come from, Growing up as a Jewish Israeli, um, our whole education system, in a way, is built towards the army because the army is obligatory and it's part of the culture. Uh, so, in in a way, there is even some years in the end of school that you go to do some kind of light training of the army, and you know everything is kind of built towards that. And all the ethos, all the history, all the citizen lessons are all very connected with that. And my experience of the army was very different of what I was told, and and I came out very shattered, also in terms of kind of mentally, spiritually, what is right, what is true, and uh, there a lot of doubts and questions about the education and the way that I was taught and what I was taught. And theater was unintentionally an incredible tool for me to research and narratives and meta narratives and fine elements and it's still there's still someone it's like a box that you open there is more and more and more and the complexity of things but basically yeah i i think i experienced uh growing up as a as a man as an israeli man and the disillusion of man of that as a big uh, initiation into this um what could what could be a new story for for everything but education being a really part important part of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for sharing that. And coming to the right now moment, uh, what might be a threshold situation that you are facing in your life or work right now? In other words, unlearning again and new ideas to unfold. Yeah, there are several. Um, you know, I was mentioning that I started teaching. Um, in a university and again 10 years ago i was studying in university and i my my father died and i was just tired of the academy and i just left and i went i already knew i want to do theater of the oppressed and i knew that i i didn't feel that's the place so you know i kind of left shutting the door in academia and now it's coming back and um so it's coming back in different ways one is kind of this being a teacher and the difficulty of what does it mean and how to be a teacher in, in a way that is coherent with what I think and believe in. So that's a threshold of this being a, a, a teacher and educator and coming back to academy as a researcher. Um, so might mean going back to writing a doctorate in academy or, or something else or inventing something else that, <laughs> that, that, um, and that's the entrepreneurship because I, one of the facilitation consultation work that I do is also with migrants on opening their own business. And at the same time, I'm um, building up to build my own. And there is it's a very big threshold kind of putting yourself out there and, um, you know, developing something that is quite ambitious and, um, and then, you know, taking, you know, just, just today, yesterday, <laughs> kind of about the name, the name of, of of the app that we're working on and <laughs> getting me crazy. I thought, oh, I don't know <laughs> what to do uh, with this name. Okay. Just let it go and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, what is emerging for you with reimagining education from the perspectives you were telling us about? Can you talk a bit about prototyping idea? Yeah, so, you know, I... I feel um, there are, you know, two things that are very alive for me, uh, important for me in terms of the, the reimagining side of education, so the new education that really, really uh, support me. So one thing I started to say about theater and art is a way of 
um, investigation of self in relation to others and world. And I see theater as an innovative technology because although it's around for thousands of years, uh, and although we invented all sorts of technology and sciences, I, I believe there is no, we haven't invented anything better to understand ourselves than uh, theater. And uh, this, the capacity in theater to create a stage, right? Uh, and, and, and identify and investigate in such a way is, is like the base of, I believe, social innovation and, and, and human, human, humanity. Uh, yeah, I, what's that about, like, so the, so that's, that's something, you know? So one of my questions is around all this knowledge, right? So I'm, I, I, I feel I'm pretty smart. My father was a professor of ecology. Very, my I see my daughter already smarter, you know. Uh, and I, my question is: is what is it for, right? Like, what is all this being smart useful on the larger scales? <laughs> what are we doing with all our genius smartness, right? And 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 we have real, real, real challenges and problems. It seems that the fact that we keep knowing more is not really solving that. Um, so, so again, going back to the theater and the art, what it taught me is still teaching me is that I cannot understand without knowing myself and understanding myself and the complexity of being a human being, not like myself, Uri, but myself as a complex entity, human beingness. Um, and yeah, so, so that's necessary for reimagining education and and there, and there is, there is more uh, that is, yeah, um, men mentoring. So being having mentoring for me, meaning Hector was really, really important, and um, and being a mentor and that's something we've lost. This kind of mentoring. So I think that's that's also something we're interested in developing with Imagine Action how to create more of uh, this mentoring. And um, yeah, kind of seeing being the mentor is, is not something that is a teacher that knows, but someone that sees you and, and you can kind of learn from each other as well. This is from mentoring and seeing one another. How do we engage meaningfully with the traditional wisdom for learning and education, educating. Yeah, um, w when you say traditional, you mean... Um, like ancient, like collective? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. like, yeah. So traditional, the, the real traditional, the first yeah. indigenous... Yeah. Indigenous, first, indigenous first nation. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm just uh, observing with a lot of curiosity and admiration and, and willingness to be of service to a, a group uh, uh, of indigenous Aboriginal uh, people in Australia that are fighting for the river, the Maratura River or Fitzroy River, as it's called in um, uh, colonial name. And there is a lot of really beautiful work that is being created by this council. And they're speaking to something that feels so resonant about the way of understanding what is law and what is land and, and what is nature in, in which uh, the, the law, the first law, the first nation law, the law that comes from the land, that is the law, it's not the law of man over nature, it's the, the law of nature in, in, that tells us how to be people in, with nature. You know, it's, it's the law that tells you, that in which nature tells you how to be in synergy with it. Uh, how to, it's, it's, it's the tree telling he, its medicine, is the river, uh, you know, and, and this kind of knowing, this place, deep wisdom is, and it's what we need to, to survive somehow the future. And, um, and I, I do hope that <laughs> we will manage to down because we are all heading towards being Australia also in terms of climate. <laughs> uh, 
and, uh, and, and, and I hope we'll get our grips together as soon as possible so we can minimize the damage already created. But, and I feel it's really not about, sometimes there is a lot of kind of um, trying to solve it with the same kind of technology and modernity and, and, you know, and there is a big blind spot in that. And there is a sort of, there is a huge blind spot that we're trying to solve it with the same kind of mentality of, you know, we, we know and we will manage and, and they like being more humble and being more in connection and listening to, to nature. Um, and that, that's what, for me, is this traditional Aboriginal wisdom is about listening really deeply. And then listening also to the ancestors and, and, and the opportunity in every moment. So, you know, I'm Jewish European heritage, some Scottish lines, some German lines, and um, the ancestry, knowing who I am, who I was, um, and of course, being dislocated, uh, but also knowing that there is no dislocation when we zoom out enough. You know, we're all indigenous in one way or another to this, you know, to this um, place. And, and there is an opportunity. Nature is always there. You know, I'm just in a home that has been very kind to us with a lot of fruit trees too much fruit trees, we don't know, we give them to, to our neighbors and then they give us other stuff. You know, this is a beautiful tradition of wisdom, it's in Italy, this kind of gifting, have so many fruit, what do we do? We gift it to these neighbors and they started give, giving us other things. <laughs> That's, and, and there is something so, you know, and, um, it's, and it's, it's still there, right? This, this is, this, this is what it means. That's the law, right? That is the law. Thank you very much, Yuri. Thank you very much for this interview. <laughs>